Welcome to the very first holiday season of The Story. Season 5 features eight stories of trailblazers paired with the beginnings of some of the most famous winter holidays ever. Season 5 of The Story is brought to you exclusively by Salesforce, the world's number one customer relationship management platform. More than 150,000 businesses are using Salesforce to blaze their own trails to success. The Story is created by our team at Mission.org, a media company and podcast network. Enjoy. Hey everyone, welcome to the Story After Show. This is a special holiday edition. I can't believe we're at season five already of the story, and I'm joined by the lovely Stephanie Postles. Happy holidays, everyone. This is going to be a fun after show, and I really loved every episode of the holiday season of the story. It was so fun. Same here. Julia did an awesome job narrating them, and we hope you enjoyed the story podcast, which is also the best of 2018 by Apple. Just want to throw that out there. Yay. So the first two stories we did were You Are Many, He Is One, about the Chinese New Year. And the second was Start at the Roots, and that was about the origins of Kwanzaa. So instead of going back and kind of rehashing what you already heard, I thought we would do a little bit different of a format this time. And this format is basically what the stories inspired, what type of thought experiments they prompted, what type of calls to action, or what was the message that we took away from the story and are applying in our own lives. So we wanted to kind of take this after show in the direction of actionable insights, and it's my hope that this is what it will do. So let's kick it off. The first story was about the Chinese New Year, and this took me back to an article I wrote a year ago about the New Year's resolution that 99% of people won't do. And I originally thought it was a really interesting idea. You would take down your New Year's resolutions, you would hide them in an envelope or basically keep them private. You would show them to one other person, and then at the end of the year, you would open them and review them and hold yourself accountable. You know, did you do it? Did you not do it? One of the things that hit home this year was that had I stuck hard and fast to any of those resolutions, we would not have been able to achieve what we achieved. And a lot of those resolutions were great, but you can't predict everything that's going to happen to you in the course of a year. And if you could, Life wouldn't be fun. The simulation, this experience, the universe, whatever it is, couldn't have excitement if you knew everything that was going to happen. And I think that that was a powerful reminder for me to step back and not focus so much on what I'm going to accomplish in the year and you know the massive amounts of discipline and getting all the particulars right and things like that. And instead, just pause and say, each day is going to demand fresh eyes, a beginner's mindset. And each day is going to offer almost a hidden opportunity to do something new, become something more. And I thought that that was a powerful reminder for me where basically check yourself and say, okay, that's a great idea, but in practice, it's not going to be that helpful. And it wasn't that helpful. And I'm really glad I didn't stick to some of those resolutions that I thought I needed to. Yep. I love that because I feel like if you were to stick to every single one, And at the end of the year, you're like, man, knock that checklist off. You either set your checklist way too low or you weren't learning throughout the year because you were able to do everything you thought you knew a year prior from that. So I love that. And I think that's a really good method to not stick too strongly to your resolutions. Always be ready to alter them based on new information. Yes. You know, it's a step away from having a fundamental mindset where you're not malleable, you're not adaptable to change. And I definitely want to get away from that because It's very important to have a plan. It's very important to be definite in your actions, be a definite optimist. But at the same time, when that new information comes, you might have to change your model. You might have to rethink how you're doing things. And that type of thought got sparked by the story of the uh, Chinese New Year and basically reflecting on the origins of China and the fact that, you know, their civilization has been, you know, chugging along for the last like 5,000 years or something Uh, something very, very crazy. Maybe in a future episode of the Mission Daily or the story, we'll get into one of the oldest books in the world, which is the I Ching that was uh, originated in China. And it's just a fascinating background. But um, that type of adaptability, I think, is crucial as we move into a new year where things are changing faster than ever. All right. So love that. My takeaway from it was all around when the old man was trying to save his whole village. Do you remember that part where he's, you know, putting red on everything and having fireworks go off to make sure the beast stays away from the families and the homes and doesn't, you know, kill more people. And that was a really good reminder that you can't save everyone. 
and you need to teach the man or person to fish to help themselves. And yeah. I think sometimes I at least get caught in this trap where I'm always trying to help everyone else to the point where I'm probably hindering their performance because I'm doing so much for them. And I'm not actually saying like, here's how you do it. Now go fly away, little butterfly. Like now you know how to do this. So yeah. that was a really just fun reminder that you can't save everyone. You might be able to start in the beginning and show the way. But after that, you need to bring more people on board with you and let them all help to be able to get compounding returns, basically. And what you just mentioned, too, is vital to develop a more voluntary style of leadership, of collaboration, where you get to see and be open to that individual's creativity and the fact that they're going to encounter new situations and you want their mental models to be able to evolve. You don't want to set hard and fast rules where they can't become you know, fluid and move, move throughout them and adapt to new information. And the other thing that I was thinking too is like that beast in the story, You know, he's, he's marking the, the doors and everything and the beast that they're trying to escape and protect against and the proverbial dragon that's always out to get us. It's easy to think of that as just chaos and that we need more and more order. But I think in reality, we need to be afraid of fundamentalism in all its forms. That's the real dragon. If nature has taught us anything, it's that rigid mindsets and those who don't become symbiotic with their environments, with other people, with their teams, with their partners, doesn't work. <laughs> we don't get anywhere without that type of intertwined survival, dependence, and reliance on each other. Great things can't be accomplished. So that was one more reminder of that. And then in the spirit of achieving great things, the second episode, which was about the origins of Kwanzaa, that was a really powerful challenge to me. And I think both of us, because this is the first year that we're not traveling home to our, you know, our homeland of Maryland. <laughs> of Maryland. Ten, ten, ten. <laughs> And what I think was so cool is that we decided, okay, this year we need to start building some of our own traditions. And that's so, so important if you're going to build a family or if you're going to aim to eventually build a dynasty of- Or a know, network of friends in a new area. Generation, yeah, of friends, of family. You have to start working at building a new tradition. And I was very inspired by, I, before this, I didn't know the origins of Kwanzaa. I had a rough I idea. Either. And hearing about the professor who analyzed the current situation at hand and then going back to the drawing board and studying the best parts of his origins, his ancestry that really inspired, that really spoke to him and taking all of those traditions and blending them together into something new. I thought that was profound. And I thought that that's a great reminder for anyone that you have your history, you have where you're from, where your family's from, and there are bits and pieces along the way that if you don't save them, if you don't go out, claim them, decide what they mean and incorporate them into your family traditions, they're going to be lost forever. You have to take it seriously that this stuff is going to fall into the quicksand of history and people are going to forget about it unless you revitalize it, save it, and then you know act it out again at the end of every single year with your holiday tradition. Yep. It kind of reminded me of the other night we were at dinner with your parents at our house and how your mom told me how she used to sing, you, her and your dad would sing Christmas carols before each meal. Yeah. And I was like, and not the whole thing, just like a piece of it. But I was like, that's a really good idea because some Christmas car carols, I actually can't remember the lyrics to anymore. And that's a great way to, you know, keep something going for any tradition or any, you know, it can be for Kwanzaa if there's a certain song, it can be for anything. But I was like, that's a fun way to incorporate it into the holiday every single day leading up to it in a fun way. Um, but then also not being afraid to veer off and like start your own new stuff that's just what i loved is like a lot of people come into this world and they think you know there's certain holidays that i grew up with and this is just how it is but hey if you see an opportunity to make a change and it'll better the world i love that he did that let's leave a challenge for everybody to start your own holiday or maybe start really really small and start a new holiday tradition maybe it's from your history maybe it's from your imagination but whatever it is during this holiday season establish a new beachhead in your family, in with your friends, where you do something a little bit differently. Maybe it's inspired by the past, maybe it's inspired by the future, but either way, dream up a wonderful holiday and then enact it. And have fun. See you guys at the next After Show. Thanks again to Salesforce for sponsoring this season of The Story. The Story is created by The Mission, your number one source for accelerated learning. We send out a daily newsletter, operate a network of podcasts and shows, and our brand studio creates sponsorships that drive results for world-class companies like Salesforce. Subscribe and learn more at mission.org.